not let him come around the side of my car. Get on the sidewalk, now. That's what, privacy, there we go, you got a news camera. All right. So obviously she's somebody of status or importance. Oh, wow. <laughs> Dude, just shot around the corner. <laughs> TMZ <Okay>. special. <laughs> I did three, you're gonna do nine, okay? Okay. And take a serious. So he takes three and tells her to do nine. Like, yes, but isn't that what, a, what right. every officer does, right? Because, couldn't the officer do it sober? Exactly, right. <laughs> So I'm just gonna do three, but I want you to do nine. <laughs> yes, totally right. <laughs> All right, we're back with another reaction video, but this time we have attorney Maurice Rice. He's a newer attorney in our firm, um, but no stranger to uh, to this arena. He's a former law enforcement officer, former prosecutor here in Chicago, um, and now he's a criminal defense attorney on our side. We're going to tell you the good, we're going to tell you the bad, and I have no doubt that you're going to do the same in the comments. So let's watch. All right, ready to roll, Maurice? Yep, let's go. All right, so you were coming this way towards the highway? Yeah. Okay. So how did we end up upside down? I don't know. <laughs> take your lease in here for the first test. Can we have whoever's car that is, mm -hmm. either face east and just whatever lights are facing east, have those on and have the back on crews. Okay. So there's no flashing. All right, and same if we can do the same with this one too. Looks like a pretty happening sort of urban area. I don't know, in, in this defendant, this well, soon to be a defendant, I'm guessing. Uh, person, This girl sitting on the side of the road. and gets Smoking a cigarette. Out. Yep. And what I caught there is, you know, they're positioning the cars, turning off lights because they're about to do standard field sobriety right. tests. And as a former law enforcement officer, former prosecutor, now defense attorney, uh, you know that certain police overhead lights have the um, ability to affect uh, how an individual's pupils react when they're performing the horizontal gaze nystagmus test. Yep, and so our guess is that's probably the very first test they're about exactly. to Exactly, but another issue I saw, uh, obviously we know coming up, an issue within you know, the state of Illinois as far as what is required to prove a uh, person is driving under driving while impaired is actual physical control. Yep. Uh, you know, you do have the slight admission that, you know, where were you coming from? Oh, I was coming from this direction going that way. And that's how you ended upside down. And she, ha ha, laughs. Yep. And so, exactly right. So in most DUIs, at least here in Illinois, there's two big things that need to be proven, two elements of the crime of driving under the influence. One is that they're driving or in actual physical control of the vehicle. Number two is that they're over the legal limit mm -hmm. or too intoxicated to safely operate the vehicle. That's, that's two different things. Um, in most DUIs, the question is like, were they intoxicated or not? But in some, a smaller percentage, but in some, the issue is, was this person actually ever driving the vehicle or in physical control of the vehicle? And when there is an accident and police arrive after afterwards, you know, they do have to establish right. who, who the heck was the one driving. Mm -hmm. um, so that we've seen cases that way. There's multiple people in the car and they're all sort of standing outside of the mm -hmm. car by the time the police uh, arrive. You know, you can do some context clues, right? Like who's, <laughs> who's the registered owner, right? right? Who does everyone point the finger to? Cops are usually pretty smart about this. And they say, so, so what happened, you know, when you were mm -hmm. driving or mm -hmm. were you driving, taking a left here? You're going eastbound here. And then people sort of inadvertently admit to right. me, yeah, yeah, I was the one that was driving. And even if you have like the, you know, the smart defendant that says they, you know, chooses to remain silent and say nothing, even if cops search you and they find those keys in your pocket, yep. that may be uh, essential to prove actual physical control. Yep, exactly right. Man, can I come talk to you over here? Uh, no, no, no. Right here, right here. Where are you bringing me over here? So you have some privacy. What's up? So you have some privacy? Yeah. Little stumble there. So, mm -hmm. if you could stand right here for me. What I want to do is, I want to do some tests to make sure you get to drive, okay? What's right. up? I said I would like to do some tests to make sure you get to drive, okay? I'm not driving. You're not driving anymore. No. You okay? Yeah. I, I, said, I said I don't want to make sure you are good to drive because the whole reason we're here is because your car is currently upside down on the road. Yeah. So, I want to make sure you're. So, officers do that. Like, hey, I just want to make sure you're okay to drive home, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's. You know, they don't have to advertently, you know, outwardly ask, do you wish to do these tests? Right. They can kind of just say, hey, come on, let's go do these. Mm -hmm. And they say, okay, I want to make sure you're okay to drive home because they know that that's all that person wants is right. to get the heck out of there and drive home. Mm -hmm. that, that little 
uh, the little trick way of doing it kind of falls flat when your car's upside down. Right. Exactly. <laughs> because you know that they're She's not, not driving, driving anywhere. Yeah. Right. So the officer's old tactic, you know, it doesn't quite work. Yeah. Quite and, and, you know, they, they suggest it in an authoritative manner without actually, you know, coming across as, you know, ordering you to do this stuff. Hell, take right. these tests for me. You know, and, and a lot of people really don't, it doesn't kick in and it, maybe I shouldn't do these tests. Maybe I need to refuse. Just by the way the officer presented it to them. Yep. Yep, add that presentation by the officer mm-hmm. is key. It is it is a skill. Right. It's a part part art. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah, some officers are, are good at it, some are not. That's mm-hmm. that whole, you know, demeanor, bedside manner, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> exactly. How was yours when you were an officer? Uh I had a FTO who was like the king of DUI. So mine was always um, you know, step outside the car for me and talk to you real quick. And you know, Talk very softly like the officer did. Why? Because that natural inclination is to come closer to you, catch a whiff of that breath, okay? Mm-hmm. There's the odor of an alcoholic beverage. All right, let me step over here uh, Step over here with me. Let me have you just perform a couple of these tests. I want to make sure you're okay. And, you know, depending on how you perform on the test, you'll be on your way. Yep. And nine times out of ten, they're doing them willingly. They're doing them. They're yep, and you roll right into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not driving. I understand you're not currently, okay? Yeah. All right, so can you stand right here for me? Yeah. Right on my flashlight beam, right there. What I would like you to do is put your feet together, like that, and hands by your side, outside of your pockets, okay? Are you diabetic? No. I'm kind of disappointed by that. <laughs> I wish I was. Do you have a pen? Yeah, I do. I gave mine to Kara's mine. Is that HGN test yeah. you reference? So, were you wearing your seatbelt during the accident? Yes. Okay. Mission to driving. Mm-hmm. No. Smack your head. No. Okay. So he's ruling out any alternative possibilities with why, you know, she may not be able to effectively perform the HGN test. Right. You know, obviously, if you have a head injury, an officer's, like, training should kick in. Okay, I'm not performing this test. And also, you can look at the the pupils. So if she had a, an obvious head injury, or maybe not even an obvious head injury, those pupils would be, like, blown. One would be very pinpoint. One would be, like, huge. Yep. That would be indicative of a head injury. And, and you know, an should, advanced attorney like yeah. us is going to come in in court exactly. and say, hey, I don't care what you test, what you think you saw right. on that test. It has nothing to do with alcohol. Exactly. It has to do with my, yeah, the injury. Client, this part of the test should be invalidated due to the head injuries. So. Those damn defense attorneys. <laughs> yeah. Make sure your feet, feet are together touching, okay? Just like mine. See? Yeah. You got a space. There you go. Okay. So, can't maintain a balance yeah. immediately. Yep. All right. So, you're not diabetic? Do you wear contacts or glasses? What I'd like you to do is look at the tip of my pen with your eyes, and your eyes only, and keep your head still, okay? Do you understand? Yes. Moving her head. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> She's not looking good so far. Uh, you want me to? Yeah, I would just want you to follow the tip of my pen with your eyes and your eyes only, okay? Yep. So, fails to follow instructions. She's moving her head. Balances off. She's that rocking back and forth that she's doing. Mm-hmm. Each and every time she moves her head, it's just another indicator of, of impairment. So it's not just, you know, catch all, she moved it once. Now, each and every single time, this is just going to be a, a mark that they're going to use to evaluate whether she's impaired or not. Officer's doing a good job. So there's a specific number of passes, there's a specific right. amount of time that is required. You know, you can't rush through it. Not at all. If you're going to actually get indi- indicators that can be admissible right. or used in court. So the point here is, in my opinion, is that there are a bunch of clues. Mm-hmm. The average, not even the average, I'd say 99.9% of people who uh, go through that test don't realize that there's actual specific indicators mm-hmm. that the officer's looking for that they mark down. They go watch their video afterwards. They mark it down. It goes into a report, mm-hmm. and that's used in court. What most people, I think, at least what they explained to us, is like, oh, I did okay. Like, I think I passed that. <laughs> like, no, no, no. That's not the way it right. works. It's not even actually a pass-fail. It's all. just a number of in, of indicators. And there were many, many indicators. Very in much so. Um, just from prosecuting former DUI cases, I know an officer has to have a minimum of four out of those six. So, you know, when you do the, um, you know, nystagmus onset prior to 45 degrees, you know, nystagmus um, at uh, maximum deviation, I forgot the first one, but four out of six 
off immediately if they're present indicates impairment and a probable BAC above 0.08. Right. In Illinois, it's different in other states, right. but in Illinois, um, that test is only admissible to, to indicate whether or not someone has consumed alcohol, mm -hmm. not are they not their level of impairment. Correct. In other states, it's admissible to use it for other things. Mm -hmm. the, the point here is that she had the right to refuse that. Right. I, you know, I'm not here to second guess her, but well, I guess <laughs> if I was her attorney and I got to sort of sit on her shoulder and tell her in her ear, yeah, you should refuse that. And you just can be <laughs> respectful, talk to her, say, hey, I, you know, I'm not willing to do that. She's probably going to get arrested. She's probably going to get her license suspended, mm -hmm. possibly. I don't know. But, but, Th that may happen regardless. So right. All she's doing here clearly is giving them evidence to be used against her in court. Exactly. All right. Let's see. We'll then move on to the next test, which is probably a walk and turn. So this, next one. this is my favorite test out of all of them, by the way. Why? Why is that your it's favorite just, test? It's just entertaining because the, <laughs> yes. the, the instructions that are given for one, uh, you know, from the instruction phase, you know, holding yep. them in a position from heel to toe. And just giving them instructions and then allowing somebody to walk nine steps, seeing how they perform on the, the turn, making sure it's performed the exact way that the officer instructed them to do it. And then a return nine steps. This is like, first off, the, the level of instructions to somebody, you know, in a vehicle accident, you know, stressful situation with police officers, they're automatically not paying attention to each and every totally single right. detail. Yep. So, you know, yeah, they're going to mess up. It's just a matter of how much they're going to mess up due to, you know, the instructions being uh, given to them poorly or them actually possibly, you know, being impaired. So You're right. I never thought of it like that. Mm -hmm. And how hard these are to do is mm -hmm. one thing, and we could talk about that. But, right. but just the level of instruction to even begin the process, for the first test, you just saw it's kind of just follow this with your eyes and yeah. not your head and stand there. The level of instruction is not that difficult. The last one, which is basically stand on one leg and count, mm -hmm. It's not too complex, but you're right. This one, it, it, the testing starts before you've even realized the testing mm -hmm. starts because they have you stand in a certain position. You have to take a certain number of steps. It takes, it's a very awkward, strange way to step. You have to do a turn right. That's you have to come back. Yeah, and the and turn know. is not natural to how we turn anyways, totally right. people. So. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I think as a defense attorney, yeah. that's why these are circus acts right. and you know people are kind of doomed to fail in many circumstances mm -hmm. um even when sober you add in even just the slightest bit of alcohol into that and yeah people are there's going to be indicators of, <laughs> of impairment right nope don't start yet just like i am I'm, i don't understand okay go back right there put your left foot on the line put your right foot in front of your left with your heel touching your toe and put your hands by your side. Stay in that position until I tell you to begin. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay, just like I am. When I tell you to begin, you're going to take nine heel to toe steps on that straight line. You're going to. I'm look sorry. Can you slow when I down? when I tell you to begin, you're going to take nine heel to toe steps on that straight line. You're going to look at your feet, count your steps out loud, keep your hands by your side, and make sure your steps are heel to toe. It's going to look like this. I mean, just listen to that list One, of instructions. Right. Very oh. quick, very rapid. I did three. You're going to do nine, okay? Okay. On your ninth step, keep your front foot on the line and take a series. So he of takes three steps. and tells her to do nine. Right? Yes, but isn't that what what right. every officer does? Right? Because can they also do it sober? Exactly. Right. <laughs> so I'm just going to do three, but I want you to do nine. Yes, it's totally right. <laughs> and return with nine heel to toe steps on the line. One, two, three. Again, I did three. You're going to do nine. Once you start, don't stop. Make sure you look at your feet while you're walking. Count your steps out She's loud. Like you. Keep your hands by your side <laughs> and make sure your steps are heel to toe. Do you understand? I think so. Okay, do you have any questions? Okay, you can begin. One, two, three, four, five. Completely missing wow. the other toe. Now watch the turn. Here's the turn. There she is no turn. <laughs> Come on. Hey, wrong. Right. Yep. Yeah, but that's not terrible. No, it's not. I've it's seen not. people fall over right. at the turn. The instructions I gave you? So, yes, the walk down <laughs> was terrible. There was no heel yeah. to toe at all. Surprisingly, it's about nine, maybe. I don't know. They didn't show yeah. the whole thing. But, but yeah, didn't even attempt the, the heel to toe. Yeah. You said count nine. Yeah. Count nine. And then you were supposed to keep your front foot on the line and take a series of small steps with your other foot and return with nine heel to toe steps. Like a ballerina. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what any of that do you want to try it again? Want me to give you the instructions again? Yeah. Okay, let's come back over here. For <laughs> Giving her the benefit of the doubt. Right. I didn't have to do that. All right. So again, stand right here. Although at this point, he's probably just 
you know, so that's it. More yeah. than yeah. proverbial rope mm-hmm. to hang yourself. I mean, he, yeah. knows, he knows. Had, knows. had to restart the test. Yeah. <laughs> put your right foot in front of your left yes. with your heel touching your toe, and put your hands by your side. I uh, just like I, I am. I can do this. Do you want to get dry? Just like I am, and stay in this position until I tell you to begin. Do you understand? Just how I am. Right foot in front of your left with your heel touching your toe. One. Oh, no. Nope. Right foot in front of your left. One. Nope, ma'am. Two. I haven't told you to start yet. Just look, see how I'm standing? Just like that. And this is all counting left against him. He's going to yep. like check that box. Starts too left. soon, you know? Uh, yep. So this is just all counting against it. Yep, that's what I mean. The, but this one especially, mm-hmm. you're being tested before you know you're being mm-hmm. tested. The actual, like he said, the actual form has um, boxes to be checked right now, and she thinks she can just kind of can casually stay right. in there and soak it all in. Yeah. Nope, you're already uh, being tested. There, there are no, no restarts and no do-overs. This yep. is all counting against you. Yep. In your toe, hands by your side, and stay in that position until I tell you to begin. I, I don't think I can do this. Yeah. Okay. When I tell you to begin, you're going to take nine heel-to-toe steps on that straight line. You're going to count your steps out loud, look at your feet, and keep your hands by your side. Hold on. Let me finish instructing. It's going to look like this, okay? Yeah. One, two, three. I did three. You're going to do nine. Uh, on your ninth step, keep your front foot on the line and take a series of small steps and return with nine heel toe steps on the line. You can begin. You're on the two. You see, he's in a better position with his body cam now, right? Yeah, he, it's just more evidence. And maybe why he wanted to do it again. Right. He realized, oh, shoot. Remember the turn I instructed you to do? So we got way less than nine steps on that one. No. That's terrible. Are you done? <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Literally not a single heel to toe <laughs> step. <laughs> All right, go ahead and stand with your feet together, hands by your side. This is the last one. Okay. This is the last one I need in order to seal my case shut. Mm-hmm. Is essentially what he's saying there, right? right. I mean, because yeah, she she's done pretty bad. But yeah, the officer is required to do all three if, po- if, mm-hmm. possi- if, if possible. possible, right? He doesn't get the officer doesn't get to pick and choose what order they do or which ones he does. Right. It's the same three in the same order. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, if she refuses or she falls over and hurts herself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's a danger to herself, then yeah, they can cease the test. Yes, yeah, she's a danger to herself. Mm-hmm. There you go. Feet together just like mine. Heels and toes touch them. Thank you. All right. Stay in that position until I tell you to begin, okay? Okay? When I tell you to begin, I want you to take a foot of your choice, doesn't matter which one. Sarge. Behind you. We'll hold on. I want you to pick a foot of your choice, doesn't matter which one. I want you to lift it approximately six inches off the ground. You're going to point your toe and keep both your legs straight, and you're going to look at that foot that you have raised and count out loud. It's going to look like this. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, until I tell you to stop. Okay? Do you understand? Do you have any questions? Now, again, he's going to make her do this test for 30 seconds, but he only went to three. Yep, it's true. <laughs> so. Yep. And uh, there's a little trick to this mm-hmm. one. Um People tend, you know where I'm going with this? Yeah. You know better than me. Mm-hmm. Right? I was never a law Slight enforcement. Slight bending the knee. Yes, exactly Slight right. Slight bending the knee. So everyone seems to lock out their, you know, there's mm-hmm. no instructions regarding it, but people naturally lock out their knee, mm-hmm. the, the, the planted foot that they have. But when an officer demonstrates, it, they're... Tip, typically going to not lock out that knee and have a slight bend right. in it, right? Right, yeah. You have better balance. That, you, there you go. So that, that wasn't intended <laughs> to be a uh, cheat code to a standard field sobriety test, but, I mean, we're kind of, we've been sort of drawn mm-hmm. the, the dichotomy here between how an officer instructs it and performs it versus right. how they expect the defendant to. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was worth pointing out. And I love that you, you knew exactly <laughs> where I was going with that. You can begin. One, two. <laughs> One. At this point, he should just terminate it. Clearly, like, she's falling over. You don't want her to like, fall so? over and crack her head. Yeah. yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, well, are you, what's going to come out of it? You know? Right, right. I, I'm not sure. You don't want to continue? I don't, I don't know that I can do it. Huh? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's it. Right. Mark, can you put your hand 
No questions asked. Yeah. Automatically in, in the bracelets. Yeah, for sure. Now, each state's going to be different. Mm -hmm. But here in Illinois, and I imagine other places, they could have had her do a, a PBT there. They could have. Right. Optional. If like if the department has a capability, you know, that's typically along the lines for those officers. You know, they watch somebody do the fields and they're on the fence as to whether or not they're going to lock them up. Obviously, the PBT is not admissible in court as for its readings. But as an officer using your discretion, having them use the PBT, it's like, OK, you're kind of on the fence with the field. You did fairly. You, know, you didn't do bad, but you didn't do good. So this PBT, like administering that, that's, you know, Eight times out of ten, I should say, in my opinion, that's what they use to determine if they're going to affect that arrest or not. Yep, yep. And this one, you know, mm -hmm. there's no, there's no question, right? right? What he was going to do yeah, based no. on those fields. I'm going to explain it to you. I'm going to bring. Listen, I'm going to bring you over to my car so you have a little more privacy. Privacy. Do not let him come around the side of my car. Get on the sidewalk now. That's what privacy. There you go. You got a news camera. All right. So obviously she's somebody of status or importance. Oh wow! <laughs> Dude, just shot around the corner. Yeah, TMZ okay. special. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him or her present with you while you are being questioned. Having these rights in mind, do you wish to talk to me now? But he's got the admissions prior to the fields yeah. being done. He's got the conversation that happened during the field sobriety test. He's got the uh, observations he's made during the field sobriety test. So let's break that down yeah. a little bit, right? I think most people know what that was. Mm -hmm. Those were the Miranda rights, the right to remain silent. But it doesn't often, it can, but doesn't often come into play in a DUI. Right. Everything was pre Miranda. Like, they talk to you, coming up to you like they're officer friendly, worried about your safety. Okay, yeah, you know, tell me how the crash happened. It's just a crash investigation. You have nothing in your mind is, is thinking, okay, I'm going to go to jail because of this. But meanwhile, the officers are just gathering, you know, facts, gathering like, you know, the, the evidence and Okay, yeah, you know, you were driving. This is your car. Yeah, you flipped. Okay, let's just, you know, talk, check you out, make sure you're okay. Uh, you know, let's perform these couple tests for me. Let me check your eyes real quick just to make sure, you know, you're not injured. Uh, you know, make sure that you're good to go, and I'll get you on your way. Everything's consensual up, uh, up until that point uh, to the point to where, you know, they have enough. Okay, this is a DUI. I'm arresting you. Now I'm going to read you Miranda. Yep. Because other than that, if you, somebody immediately comes up to you on a DUI investigation as a result of a crash, and I read you your Miranda rights, are you going to participate in, in, in my investigation? Right. No. No. Not at all. Right. It's turning them off, right? This in a DUI investigation, or really any investigation, is a series of milestones. Mm -hmm. In this one, we saw police arrive on scene for an accident. Are, pe are police allowed to do that? Yes, of mm -hmm. course, right? Then... At some point, based on their observations, her behavior, it went from not just a crash investigation, but a possible DUI investigation mm -hmm. as well. That's a new sort of milestone. Right. But they're under no obligation to read her Miranda not at that at point because it's just an investigation. Yep. Um, and Miranda doesn't, doesn't trigger that. They can draw out this investigation. The... They have very specific tests that they do in order to confirm or deny their suspicions during this investigation. None of that triggers Miranda because she was not under arrest. And Correct. conceivably, they could have been, it happens, they put her through all those tests and they say, you know what, you're totally right, we're going to let you be on your way, and right. there is no arrest. So, so, again, there is no Miranda rights that are triggered at that point until that investigation ends mm -hmm. and the officers say, we do have probable cause to put you in handcuffs, to right. make an arrest. Then Miranda is triggered. But all those things that happened during the investigation, they were voluntary, exactly. like Mary said. They were consensual, but they're still admissible. Mm -hmm. They're all going to be used against her in court. That's the purpose of the investigation is to <laughs> gather things that can be used um, in the eventual outcome of that investigation, which in this case is a DUI. Right. That's where so many people call us for a DUI consultation, say, that officer screwed up. I need my case dismissed. He never even read me Miranda. Or he read it to me when I was already in the car. <laughs> right. 
or when I was already in handcuffs or yeah. when I was back at the station, right? Yeah. And that is typically not going to be a winning argument in your average DUI case. Exactly. Let's see. So we have a, we're currently at a checkpoint in downtown. I'm gonna take you there. While we're there, you'll get a phone call and you can have someone come pick you up, okay? Well, this is a sobriety checkpoint. And instead of, on, well, on days that we have these, we're allowed to give people summonses instead of doing, bringing them into booking. So we get this process started, I'll let you get a, your husband a phone call so you can let her know to come here instead, okay? Where are yours? Right in downtown by Bushnell Park. The results of the chemical test or drug influence evaluation or your future. That's the breathalyzer, right? Right, right there. Admissible in evidence against you in any legal proceedings. And at this point, would you like to contact an attorney? What do you think? <laughs> I ask every single person. Horrible question to ask. Yeah. Don't ask the police officer arresting you for, for legal advice. Right. Each state's a little different here, but what they're doing is they're basically giving her her rights as they relate to the breathalyzer because as everyone says in the comments that doing the breathalyzer or refusing to do that breathalyzer can and will have an implication upon your For driver's sure. license it's a little different everywhere but here in illinois and i realize this is not in illinois um, but here in illinois if if you take that breathalyzer and you're over the legal limit, then your license, and this is your first DUI, then your license will be suspended for six months. Mm -hmm. If you refuse it, then your license will be suspended for 12 months. So mm -hmm. twice as long for refusing. And so people in the comments and everyone else, well, then just do it, just do it. Yeah, I, but you're also making the criminal case, which is different than a license suspension. You're making the criminal case mm -hmm much more airtight against you because there's an actual blood, a reading of your blood alcohol concentration right. at the time. So, you know, typically without knowing more information, most uh, DUI attorneys are going to tell you, don't blow, don't blow, don't blow. Right. Because you're prioritizing your criminal case over your temporary driver's license suspension, mm -hmm. which is probably a safe bet. You know, everyone then creates these scenarios. What if you didn't drink anything and all that stuff, right? <laughs> um, um, but, but here, for her right now, truthfully, she's probably cooked either way. Right. I mean, just she appears intoxicated. She flipped her car over. Mm -hmm. It seemed like she maybe, I don't think she admitted to alcohol, but she admitted to some, I don't know, at least being out. And, and right. you know, there's some things in that report that are gonna, that are gonna For point sure. to that. Um, but should she still refuse? Yeah, probably. I, th I think she should. Um, she's gonna have a better ability to negotiate and bargain if there's not a blood alcohol right. rating. This is just, you know, when you're wrapping a present, this is just the ribbon on the bow for mm -hmm. so. Yep. Uh, I don't have any training. Would you like to look through this phone book for an attorney's number? Sure. Oh, I wasn't kidding, it's a phone book. <laughs> I've never <laughs> seen that. I want to look through a phone book. Their you video, ever seen that? Their video and her talking to a lawyer. Like, right. No. Yeah, right. Exactly. No. Yes, right. <laughs> this doesn't happen in Illinois. They don't Not act at all. this at this point of reading. Um, the sort of rights or really rules as, as they relate to the um, breathalyzer, they don't offer an attorney. No. They don't. In fact, even if you said, I got an attorney, I want to make a phone call, they're going to say, nope, no. you decide right now. Are you going to do the breathalyzer or not? So again, every state is a bit different, but mm -hmm. I can't imagine what this attorney is going to say with, with no information <laughs> other than like, yeah, don't do it. Call me tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But what else can the attorney say? I'm in trouble. I need an attorney. Yeah, I had an accident. Yeah. Now no one's hurt. I'm detained. Yes. Looking at our personal attorney. Oh. Yeah, this is uh, just a, so you can call to get legal advice for this. That's it. I'm curious to know if she does it. Um, right. Curious to know the outcome of the case, but I think we can speculate a bit. Yeah. To keep it simple, as it relates to alcohol, there's a DUI because you blew over the legal limit, and that reading says that your blood alcohol concentration is over that legal limit. And that's what they would, she would be charged with if she does this breathalyzer and is over the limit. Right. Then there's also a DUI that says, no, 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 you, you didn't do the breathalyzer or, or regardless of whether or not that blood, breath, or urine test was done, 
the clues that you displayed, whether that's on the field sobriety test or your ability to drive or communicating with the officer, all those other sort of things, those indicate to me that you are under the influence. So that's mm -hmm. two different ways to be charged with a DUI. Oftentimes people will be charged with both or, or multiple. Mm -hmm. um, so either way, the, I guess the point I'm trying to make here is either way she's about to be charged with DUI. Um, if she refuses that, there's no reading. Um, and then they're just basing it on everything else, namely the field sobriety tests. What's your thoughts? You think that they could, uh, uh, who do you think is winning that case in court? Uh, I think the police are winning this one yeah. um, immediately. Just, uh, they can prove, you know, she wasn't able to safely operate the motor vehicle just by the crash. Uh, yep. you, you know, any cop, you know, worth his weight is going to take some pictures of that vehicle, uh, you know, hand that to a prosecutor. To, and I'm using that in my closing arguments automatically. Yep. Was she able to operate this vehicle in a safe manner? No, look at it. It's upside down on a public road. Yep. Uh, you know, as far as getting to her um, possible impairment, uh, her performance of the fields, you know, they speak for themselves. Uh, you know, obviously we can't see it on the body worn camera, but that cop's observations of her eyes, you know, whether uh, at what point was the nystagmus present is going to be telling. Uh, you know, her performance on the, uh, the second portion of the test, the walk and turn, not just the first performance, but the second one is going to be, uh, you know, strong indicator of possible impairment. Mm -hmm. And uh, her performance on the one leg stand test is going to be another, you know, indicator of, of her being possibly impaired. Yep. It'd be interesting how they're going to tie all that in and contribute it to alcohol because, again, we have no admission of drinking. Uh, you know, if the police officer testifies he detected the odor of an alcoholic That's beverage. That's what it'll say. You know, that'll, that'll, you know, tie the case in for him, but, you know, it would rest, it's, you know, the crux of, of the case rests on that, you know, tying all, all that into impairment if she didn't give a, a blood alcohol, excuse me, a, a breath uh, sample. All right, so next we're going to give grades. But first, mm -hmm. our, our videographer told us that, you know, sort of why those cameras are there. Told us that this is a Connecticut state lawmaker. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and that she got this DUI kind of right by the Capitol building. So we don't know much more about it, but I guess that, that does explain why... Um, People were there with video cameras so, yeah. so quick. Explains why the officers were, they seemed pretty thorough, right? Very thorough and very accommodating. Yeah, you know, very, very accommodating. accommodating. That explains that, if, yeah. if they knew it. Um, so I don't know what the story is with our case, but assuming it's a first-time DUI, uh, I, got, I don't know Connecticut, but they, a lot of states have programs for first-time DUIs where you can eliminate or at least minimize sort of the effect on your record and long-term effect on your driver's license if you do alcohol treatment programs, mm -hmm. stay out of trouble, times like that. Here in For Illinois, sure. they call that supervision. Um, other states have sort of similar programs. So um, it sounds like if this is her first time, that that's something that, that's, that you know she was able to do. Or, um, so there's a little context now that we have about it. Um, so, so tell us sort of what your grade is. First of all, let's do for the police officer. How, how did he do? I'd give him a A minus. Yeah. A minus. Very patient. Um, with a DUI investigation, again, like you're going to make your case based upon how you interact with somebody. You know, you treat them with respect, uh, you know, remain patient. Uh, you know, you're able to get them to do things without, uh, you know, that authoritative manner, you know, the authoritative uh, demeanor. You're going to get a lot. Uh, you're, you're more likely than not going to get somebody that's going to cooperate every step of the way, mm -hmm. which is what they did in this matter. You know, they showed uh, obviously they, you know, I'm speculating that they knew who she was and they offered her some privacy in performing the test. That's going to go a long way with whether or not an individual chooses to go through with performing the fields or not. Uh, and obviously, in this case, we saw the result of that. She uh, pretty much handed the officer everything on a silver platter with sure. regard to her performance of those tests. Sure. So I would give him uh, give him an A on that. All right. um, a plus would obviously, uh, you know, just I want to leave a lot of room there. Just being a former officer, you know, now defense attorney, um, you know, there's. If yeah, you how were does able he to get put, the A plus? Yeah, if we were able to actually find some way to prove that she was, uh, you know, in actual physical control of that vehicle, other than the slight uh, admission of, okay, yeah, you were driving this, that, and the third. Yeah. You know, I want that to be unambiguous. Uh, so uh, had he proved that, you know, I would think he would have checked every 
one of the elements yeah. to prove that somebody was actually uh, driving while impaired. Tough grader. I like yeah, it. Yeah, um, yeah it's same, same reasons. In a, I mean, he's got a pretty uh, pretty solid case here. Um, how about the defendant here, the <laughs> Democratic lawmaker that we learned? I'd about. give her a C. Um, yeah. She was vague in her admissions as far as driving. She never actually told them that she was consuming alcohol. Um, you know, not only she didn't say she didn't consume alcohol. You know, if you did, uh, you know, you definitely don't want that consumption to be anywhere near the time of the crash or anything, you know, that sure. happened like that. So she was very vague um, and, you know, making sure of being cognizant that she didn't admit to drinking. Uh, she never actually placed herself in that car. She said, oh, yeah, I was wearing a seatbelt. Never at any point did she say I was wearing a seatbelt in the driver's seat of that vehicle. Uh, you know, she was adamant, oh, I'm not driving, I'm not driving. Yep. Um, you know, uh, so I'd give her a C. Um, she performed the field. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Like. Yeah, <laughs> sure. So, so, yeah, I would grade her. Yeah. I get where you're coming from. Yeah. I'd probably grade her a little lower on that, yeah. just in the sense that, like, she was pretty intoxicated yeah, and shouldn't have, sure. shouldn't have drove. So, exactly. you know, that's an F, right, yeah. I guess, just from a – that's. but from a legal standpoint, as a defense attorney, what did you give us to work with? Yeah. You pointed out a couple things. Mm -hmm. I don't really think they're going to save the day, they're right? Not. But, they're not. Um, but, but they allow us to have some case as opposed to no case. <laughs> exactly right, especially if she refused right. that breathalyzer mm -hmm. at the end. Now we got right. something to negotiate on and, and you mm -hmm. know, maybe you get into that sort of – supervision program that For I referenced sure. when, when maybe otherwise they wouldn't have been reluctant um, or more reluctant. So, yeah. so yeah, she didn't, um, she did a couple things to kind of help her out. Obviously yeah. shouldn't have gotten the wheel behind the wheel in the first place, For sure. but a tough case to win overall based <laughs> on just performance of the fields. Yeah. And, and so that's the lesson I think is, you know, you could be as slick as you want, you mm -hmm. know, think, you know, all of the laws or maybe even know all the laws, refuse everything. But it's still hard to cover up being hammered. Right. Um, so the rule is don't get behind the wheel when, <laughs> when you've been drinking, right? There we go. That that's, that's sort of our take on that. I was told she got into some sort of deferred prosecution or probation mm -hmm. or supervision program, whatever they call it there. Obviously, uh, I hope she completes it all and, and moves forward and never has to deal with this uh, again. Right. Call Uber. Yeah, call an Uber. Good <laughs> advice.